Okay, year 10, I'm just gonna go from where we got up to in class, which was kind of around here, where we decided that it was sort of like the earth fighting back. And we see these words like hail and flail and burst and all sorts of connotative language that sounds quite aggressive. Sounds like something is having a fight, something is, is being, you know, assertive. And we've made the assumption that this is personifying nature and the personification of earth fighting back against this guy. So if I just continue from here, and I'm going to just finish off um, the stanza from here and over the page, I'll just go up to here and just show you again how I'm moving from literal to a more metaphorical uh, reading and trying to find my own interpretation based on clues that I see in the text. So we know that there's something aggressive happening and continues and mid these dancing rocks, at once and ever it flung up momentarily the sacred river. Now, if I look at the words that just stand out to me, dancing and also sacred river, we know that we've heard this before in the first stanza and it repeats this idea of this river is sacred. And we said that the connotation of this word was some sort of, it could be an allusion to religion, or it could just be signifying the importance of this river, that this is actually something that we should be um, treating with respect, not building a pleasure dome on. This is the word that is interesting to me, this verb here, dancing, even though I had said that it sounded aggressive, dancing is not necessarily aggressive. It seems to be more joyful. Um, so I'm just gonna keep that in the back of my mind. I'm not sure if it's important yet, but it's good as you are annotating poetry to highlight anything that stands out to you and think, why did I like this word? And it might be important later on as we come to the end of the poem, it might not be important but it sounds like the earth is fighting back and is happy about it. It's not um, fighting back in anger. It's not fighting back in um, perhaps violence. It's just fighting back because it's confident and, and happy that it is wild and happy that it is free. Ooh, free, that's a good word. I'll just jot that down. Five miles meandering with a mazy motion through wooden dale the sacred river ran through then reached the caverns measureless to man and sunk sank in tumult to a lifeless ocean. So this seems to me to be it's now calmed down a bit. We had the 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 uh, ocean or the the water kind of spurt up in almost like an earthquake. Um, uh, volcano fashion and now it has gone back to being quite calm and it almost reminds me if we consider this again that personification of when you have some sort of burst of emotion and you snap back at somebody or you fight back or you stand up for yourself and I am going to continue to think about this word dancing because standing up for myself is not necessarily something that is a bad thing. Yes, I'm being assertive. Yes, I'm showing emotion, um, some sort of emotion or strength, but it's not a, uh, like it's not a uh, abuse of my power. The words that stand out to me again is all the M alliteration. Now remember we said up here that this created a pace this created some sort of motion in itself that makes me feel like I am the river. So not only is Coleridge helping us kind of visualize the, um, the nature fighting back or standing up for herself, but also I, as the, the reader, I become the river. I am this woman in the nature that, that he is discussing, which is really interesting um, that he wants us to identify with this woman. And amid this tumult, so amid this kind of all this, uh, um, you know, action, Kubla heard from afar ancestral voices prophesying war. Wow, that's really interesting. Now, 
this here is some, you know, auditory imagery. And it's not necessarily that um, it is a real voice. We already know that it's the voice of nature. And nature is saying, guess what? If you continue to build your pleasure dome, what's gonna happen? So we have here the connotation again of this word, of this concept. I guess we could even say that it is an allusion to war, the concept of war. But there is going to be nature versus man. Nature versus humans. If you continue to build on our sacred land. Maybe I'll stop there because I think that we've done about almost six minutes worth. And, you know, so I'm continuing to look for personification. I've got more illusion. I've got some more imagery. I have found some um, alliteration that creates this rhythm and pace and voice. And again, I've got my um, uh, punctuation and exclamation marks that I am starting to form my interpretation here that there is some sort of personification happening of nature nature is standing up for herself i've assigned her agenda because of the words that we talked about in class today the idea of it being fertile the idea of it wearing a girdle the fact that it, he talks about he compares this with a simile to a woman i start to picture nature as a woman Oh, Mother Nature. Com and Mother Nature fighting against this man, but not just any man, not just, you know, it's not a battle of the sexes, but it's a powerful man. A man who is abusing his power by trying to contain nature and squish her. I think I'm getting, you know, an interesting reading. You don't have to agree with me, but that's where I'm going. And let's see what you can come up with in the next stanza.